it's only natural for an artist to want to paint the things that they experience every day. For Wilma Ingalls, having wild turkey and deer wandering through her yard is a common occurrence. As a result, Wilma has had a wonderful opportunity to capture the beauty of these exquisite animals on canvas. I love it. It's relaxing, and that's what I've always wanted to do. Um, when I was growing up, I've always been able to draw, and I just, I've always had an interest in art in school, and I was always the teacher's pet because I could draw, and I'd always get to fix the bulletin boards and, and do everything like that, so I guess I just stuck with it. Okay, I started out in Western art in at the University of Texas in Austin, Austin, Texas. And from there, I had a portrait class from Richard Bolish. And I also had florals and uh, I've had a, a lot of training. And I guess After I moved to Alabama in 1979, I started on the wildlife because that's what I see here. And we see deer across the road and we see turkeys that come up in the yard. So I see a lot of that and I'm, I'm interested. I love animals and I like to paint the animals and try to paint them as natural as, as I can get them because that's mostly what I see. I just dream, <laughs> just dream about what it might have been and I read a lot of books, a lot of Western books and I, I study a lot of like the gun catalogs and things about like the old powder type uh, guns and everything to make sure that they're all within the period as to which uh, the one that I'm painting. When I get up in the morning, if I feel like I'm in the paint, the mood to paint boats, that's what I want to paint. And if I'm in the, foot, the mood to paint uh, western paintings, that's what I want to paint. And a lot of times if I see a lot of deer out in the uh, in the afternoons, well, I'll get up the next morning and paint deer. Or it just depends on the mood I'm in. But I love to paint anything. For over 25 years, Mary Kirk Kelly has been creating lifelike ceramic vegetables, fruit, and flowers. You may have seen her work featured in Southern Accents or Veranda Magazines. I wasn't led into it, honestly. I really like working with clay, but I would never thought about it as a career. I never thought about art as a career, as a matter of fact. Uh, but uh, after I came home in 1972, my father had died, and mother was doing uh, hobby ceramics, and um, there were two old deteriorating barns still standing. One had fallen. And so the object was to see what can we do with the bonds. So really what I did to begin with was um, um, oh, fixed pieces of old antiques or a piece of junk, uh, because I'd always done crafts of some sort. Just what can you do with what you have? And mother did the ceramics, but then she decided to go to the Gulf and live, and I, w I had been making um, Oh, butterflies and flowers and so forth to stick on a piece of driftwood, and those are the things that were selling. We never had a big walk-in traffic of uh, selling here. We we knew nothing about business, about little shops, and as I knew nothing about the craft shops. And when I heard of the, all the kits that were available, you know, but um, what I what has become my mainstay of the 
vegetables and fruit. And it was vegetables that drew me first. I knew that fruit had been made by for centuries by, out of everything, um, alabaster, wood, marble, what have you. And um, neighbors who had gardens around here running produce in the spring, it was so pretty. I thought, mm, I might try it. And, and um, I knew nothing of making molds. The first mold I made of um, anything was um, a jet for a chandelier. A lady who had an old house in Mobile wanted to uh, refurnish a guest chandelier. And I did that out of spackling compound. Didn't know where to get materials to do these things. I spent my first years just searching for where do you find things to do. And uh, the only training I had in, in handling clay was uh, a course in pottery, pottery that I enrolled in for fun of it and discovered I'm not a potter very well. All my pots flop. So, <laughs> um, but the uh, first really interest um, in what we were doing out here came when I had done a, a batch of vegetables and uh, from pieces that neighbors had brought in, I made molds of them and painted them. And the people came out here especially for them. But I showed in Washington, D.C. the next, oh, 1975, I think it was. Came home with enough orders to think, well, I'm in business. <laughs> so it's just sort of grown like topsy since then. Word of mouth. Never have advertised very much. Over here, this uh, Merlitan. The shawty, they, they call it poor man's squash in, in all of Louisiana. We haven't had very much here. Um, the, I was given the pieces. I've given uh, many of them. I've bought a few, but most of the pieces have been given to me from somebody's garden when they can. Uh, I have to, when I go in the produce department of a supermarket now, I see things that I like and I start thinking about, you now what? paints will I use to do this? How would we make them all? This has several different planes to it. And this is something I had to learn by doing. I couldn't find much literature on making molds when I started. Um, in order to, a mold is made of plaster of Paris and it is um, very stiff. It absorbs the water out of the clay that we pour in there is slip. It's clay mixed with water the slip. And uh, I know that in order to get the piece out without breaking it to pieces, I have to have it so that the mold will slip off. So this has to have several seams. And we try to judge where the high parts are in order to um, get a, a plaster piece that will come off. And this probably has several, mold, um, several pieces to that mold. I can't, I don't remember right now. We have two or three thousand molds, and so I don't remember all of them. Probably the most complicated mold I ever made was one, a pandanus utilis, which is a screw pine palm, later sent to me from South Florida, and asked me to make it, and that has 28 pieces in it, and that was quite a job. We make, um, in order to make a mold of one that has a great many planes like that, I, um, try to get the first piece and then block off the rest of the piece with clay and make one piece at a time, add on to it till you have the finished place. I always have either, I use a plug of clay to um, leave a casting hole, and uh, now we take a drill and drill a hole in it where it's uh, most easily repaired. I do not like to leave a great big casting hole in pieces. We make just a time. I have to have a vent in these pieces because they're hollow. Um, now, I know from there, after we get the mold, you have to let it dry a couple of weeks or so, depending on how large it is. And um, the slip or the uh, clay mixed in with water is poured into the mold. And for these pieces, such as this, they're drained out. Uh, well, all, we, we pour off the excess slip. And uh, then, I, then we stop up the casting hole and make just a vent. I have to have a vent in there because in the kiln, the air will expand under the heat 
and if it gets too much um, air expansion in there, it will explode. And I do have explosions occasionally. And that's that's pretty simple. It takes a good while. <laughs> I have become accustomed to uh, them wanting my name on it. But that uh, seems strange at first, you know. I, did, I hadn't considered myself an artist or uh, even a ceramist. But um, I enjoy putting my name on there. It's been received a lot better than it did on report cards. Oh, yes, of course. 25 years of it. There are times when I don't care if I never see any again. <laughs> but um, that's when you get overly tired and then you don't do very good work. But I find myself always going back. Yes, I enjoy it. I enjoy working with my hands. enjoy seeing what I've done. Um, sometimes not real pleased, but you're always thinking you can do better. When we return on Art Is, we will explore the wonderful train layout display created by Ronnie Jeffers. <laughs>